Joining us live now is Richard Newcomb, Vice President of Philanthropy at the Union Rescue Mission. Richard, thank you very much uh, for taking the call here in the midst of this storm uh, and this crisis. Give us an update on what's happening there. Uh, good afternoon, Frank. Uh, thrilled to be with you on your show today. It's uh, it's, it's a dire scene here. You know, it's uh, homelessness is out of control here in Los Angeles County, up nine percent the past year to seventy five thousand human human beings on the sh- that are experiencing it. But the sad number is seventy three percent, fifty five thousand have nowhere to go today or over this three day window with this terrible storm. Um, that means there's 55,000 human beings living in a car, an RV, a tent, a makeshift shelter, and just no place to go. So uh, it's challenging. I, I think more people die from hypothermia in Los Angeles and when a storm like this hits than they do in, in New York City because New York City has a law that if it's below a certain temperature, you have to come off the streets. And they, and they also supply um, much better services. They only leave 5% of their population that's experiencing homelessness. Um, on the street. So here we're 73%. What is the situation there now? Uh, I know you uh, don't turn anyone away, uh, and sadly, um, more families are homeless, right? Uh, women and children, uh, seniors. What is the, the scene there today? Um, last night we had 1,356 uh, precious souls in our three different locations. Um, about 950 of those were moms, dads, and kids. Uh, nearly 200 were seniors, and um, we do all that without government support because we have sober living living in our facilities. You know, if you, if you take government funds from the city, county, or the state, you have to operate your organization under the harm reduction model, which means people who are allowed to use drugs and alcohol, and, you know, we, we just don't embrace that, that policy. And so um, we have room for more. You know, it's going to be cold. It's going to be wet. And... Um, uh, I check with our, our VP of emergency services, and we, we have probably 50, 50 spaces for anyone that, that is uh, in a dire situation and would like to come off the streets that we could welcome them in tonight. And it's not just for a 48-hour window at emergency shelter. We, we have fully wraparound services. We collaborate with uh, Pepperdine, USC, UCLA for medical, dental, mental care, and um You know, maybe somebody will come in through our doors in the next 48 hours and move on to a better life from all that we have to offer here. On the air live with Richard Newcomb, Vice President of Philanthropy and Social Enterprise at the Union Rescue Mission in downtown Los Angeles. You're reaching the the business audience here now, uh, Richard. I I know you had a fantastic supporter in the business world. He was a giant and also a great friend and also had appeared on this program over many, many years and many times. And that is the late, great Scott Minard who was the chief investment officer at uh, Guggenheim Partners, who uh, unfortunately passed away uh, just over a year ago. I I know he was one of your biggest supporters, uh, and we all miss him very, very dearly. But for those who want to follow it in a giant uh, like that, um, what's the best way to uh, support uh, the Union Rescue Mission? Well, Scott was a giant. He was incredible. Um, You know, he started with the gift of $150 in October of 1998, and he went on to become the the most significant donor in the history of the Union Rescue Mission. He passed away December of 2022. And we doubled, we've doubled the size of Union Rescue Mission over the last five years. So we're from a $27 million organization to a $54 million organization, now have three locations, built a family center in South L.A. that is just thriving and doing great work, thanks to his support. And so uh, with Scott exiting the planet, it, it's more challenging. You know, it takes $96,000 a day to run this organization and uh, for our three locations. So we would love people to come alongside of us and help us do this work. I mentioned earlier, we don't take government support. So, um, you know, please visit us at urm.org. Um, and we'd love a donation there. My contact info is on there. I could be reached at rnewcomb at urm.org. If somebody wanted to email me and collaborate with us, we would be thrilled for that partnership. You know, 85 cents of every dollar goes to help people here. Only 15 cents of every dollar donated goes to administration and fundraising. That's an excellent uh, mark there for an organization doing this type of work here in Los Angeles. We even get a perfect 100 rating from Charity Navigator. So uh, we'd love people to come alongside of us and help us. And if somebody needs to get off the street, there's a button on that same website, urm.org, upper right-hand side, I Need Emergency Services. You could click that number. You could call it tonight, and we could help you get off the street if you're in a dire situation. 
that's so important that there is hope and there is help available for those uh, who are desperate today, uh, especially under this terrible uh, storm. And and uh, for this audience, certainly the fact that you do not take government money is a badge of honor, Richard. Um, people are very impressed with that, but certainly it means that uh, business people and individuals um, need to support you out there. That would be great. You know, we wish the government would, too. We wish that, it, that all the funds didn't flow through HUD, who has this uh, requirement that you operate your facilities where people can use drugs and alcohol. But uh, like I said, we had 950 moms, dads, and kids last night. And what kind of environment would that be if people could freely flow with alcohol and drugs uh, in our location? So we're sticking to that policy, and we welcome everybody in with open arms and just trying to be of assistance. Been doing it for 133 years, and we would love everybody's help to help us continue to do more. Isn't that something? And for those who are just hearing about this for the first time, you're not taking government money because if you did, you'd be required to allow drug and alcohol use on the premises, which you do not. The so-called Harm Reduction Act, which uh, I think is a misnomer, right? Um, Tell us more about that so people understand uh, what's really going on here. Um, I guess I guess the government agencies that are have embraced this policy uh, believe that you're doing people harm uh, if you force them to walk into an environment and they can't have the product that they're addicted to, and so it's just become the norm. Well, it it, it mm-hmm. all all of these H and HHH properties that are being built, they're all being run under the harm reduction model, and people are overdosing in those rooms, and I think. The Skid Row Housing Trust is in receivership because it's become insolvent from lawsuits and the board's been sued and all that. So the policy hasn't worked. And so we're certainly not going in that direction. Wish they would change the government policy. Again, 85 cents of every dollar is going to life-changing programs are very efficient. So um, it, I wish the government would change that and would help support us. We could do even more. You know, we've, tripled, we've doubled in size the last five years. If we could have the community and the government supporting us, Gee, just think how much more we could do. And it's inspiring to uh, hear the stories, uh, the amazing stories, really, uh, of of what you're doing there. Also at, at Hope Gardens, which is a facility that uh, takes care of uh, homeless um, uh, women and children, right? Tell us more about that one. Correct. Uh, that's on 77 beautiful acres uh, on a canyon that most people don't even know is out there. It's kind of where the, the 118 and the 210 meet. We've been there for 16 years. It was a retirement village. It took 34 meetings and $1.5 million in legal fees to get, to get the conditional use permit. But it's two to three years. A mom who was uh, imprisoned or addicted to drugs or both, uh, we do have done a great job reuniting children that were in foster care with their mothers. Uh, we, almost none of them have their GED or high, high school education. So we, we help them get that. Many go on to college. Many go get, get jobs. We had two moms graduate recently, one had saved $18,000, one had saved $20,000. While in our programs, it's total life transformation. And somebody coming in our door tonight, getting out of the rain, would have access to that opportunity uh, and in a beautiful place that's just an oasis covered with the hot trees, uh, oak trees, and, and beautiful hills. Richard Newcomb, thank you very much uh, for taking the call. Uh, I'll let you get back to your important work there. You certainly have an open line with me here, and thank you very much uh, for uh, that important message here this afternoon. That is Richard Newcomb, Vice President of Philanthropy and Social Enterprise at the Union Rescue Mission in downtown Los Angeles.